Are you sitting down? Are you sitting down? You might want to for this one. Yes, I'm Daniel Alexander Cannon. And this is The Supernatural Show. Today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a very, very deep understanding and discernment that has come to me. And it's pretty provocative. But truth is truth. And what it is is what it is. Let me ask you a question. And then we're going to talk to my cousin Shannon and Dan that are here with me. We can see them in a second. Let me ask you a question. If, I don't know if you understand this yet, but this world works in mirrors, in reflections of itself. Time is what does that. Do you understand yet that if Christ had a comet that was in the sky during his birth or death, or an eclipse during that time, that the opposite of Christ, the Antichrist, would have that same thing going on during his arrival or departure, maybe. Well, I think we're talking about arrival. And I've said to you before that the way things work here on earth also work the same way in heaven. The heavens above that we see at night and a lot of us will be seeing during the eclipse. You have to understand that if you look at how our bodies work and how creation happens within our bodies, we can look up at the heavens and see the same thing taking place. Just a little different, but yet a image of the same. Think about what a comet looks like. It has a long tail and it has a bright head on it. Kind of like a serpent or kind of like a sperm or semen. And like I've said before, when you take, when you have two things such as the sun and moon and they come together, it creates power and an opportunity for something to happen, a creation, something to come in, come through, or something to go out. Just like when uh, a child, when a man and a woman make a baby and you bring that man and that woman together and then you have a spark and you have something that will come through aka the sperm, or you'll have something that will leave, maybe. In that case, nine months later, as in the baby, something will come through or something will go through. It's a supernatural portal in the way that Father created this world. And we're going to be talking about this stuff today. We've got a lot to get through. I don't know how in the world we're going to get through it all, but this is going to be loaded and you need to sit down and get comfortable let's uh say hello to my supernatural co-host shannon she's here with us today and uh she's been out of the weather but she's a trooper she's having a a tooth issue and i don't (laughs) know if you guys know but a a tooth issue and anything in the head that hurts is a bad day and then you throw a migraine on top of it, and you're having a double bad day. And, but she's feeling a little bit better today, so we're mm-hmm. thank, thankful to have her here. And I would ask that all y'all guys remember her in your prayers, because she is a trooper, and she's uh, she's been here for this service that we're doing for y'all guys since the inception of what we call the Supernatural Show. So when you go to Father tonight, 
ask him to help Shannon out. He listens. And the more of you to go to him and ask that, along with her, the more likely we're going to get some resolution to this quickly. Because Father, upon his own choice, his own will, can solve it right this moment. But Father works in mysterious ways, doesn't he? Well, we also have here with us today, we have my supernatural advisor, Dan. And uh, Dan, sir, how is my brother doing? Clear to party cloudy. Clear to party party cloudy. Okay. All right. I might take a moment to open this show with a prayer, please, sir. Please, sir. And uh, yeah, please do. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty, mighty name of thy Son, our Lord and King, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. I ask that the scales fall from all our brothers and sisters' eyes, that they may perceive your truth, and in so perceive your glory, your power, that uh, nothing in this world is here to harm us, but to bring us away from those who would. We ask a special healing not only for our sister Shannon, but all those who are in pain or are having difficulty during these dark hours. We rebuke it and bind it and cast it to dry places where it can no longer affect our brothers and sisters. And we glory in the wisdom that will be brought here today. Let each of us discern the truth in it and understand the lateness of the hour. This we cry unto you, Holy Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua. Amen. And I'm in. Hallelujah. Well, Shannon, uh, what do you think about the title of uh, this video today? Well, I think it's very fitting considering all the lovely things that you're going to bring up today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of <clears throat> a lot of anomalies that are going on here in these upcoming weeks are very uh they're very fitting to the ipad go to series and just a lot of things throughout history that we've all studied and kind of brought up here and it's gonna be a, a fun show today yeah it uh it's gonna be uh, very mind-bending i would say uh because you're gonna have to open your mind in order to be able to understand a whole new way of looking at some things and guys uh shannon and dan make sure you you know jump in at any point where you want you've got commentary or anything i got a lot to say but i also want y'all guys to say whatever it is that you want to say as well um i can be in my cog sometimes so why don't we just get into this let's just get into this let me just show you a few things related to the occult manufactured video. We'll start it out like this, and we got a lot of places to go. And we're also going to look at uh, the gematria, the mathematics behind things like Satan's semen. See if it happens to match anything mathematically, which would be billions to one. Anything like, I don't know, Devil's Comet. Does Comet and semen have the same gematria? Right, well, we're going to find out. But first, let's uh, let's look at let's look at this. And <coughs> I want to show you a few things. If we come back here, let me um, make this full screen. If we come back to the beginning of this video. We all know, and let me uh, let me. Get rid of the sound. Yes, the sound tells us things too, but we're going to focus on this right now. And you notice that it was dark and there were six lights in the heavens. And I believe I'm correct in saying there will be six stars, uh, six uh, angelic deities that will be seen in the heavens during this uh, eclipse. Like Mer Mercury is there, Venus is there, 
Jupiter is there. I believe Saturn is there, but I don't know if we'll be able to see it as much. They're in alignment. Six. Just like you see here. What you're looking at here, and if you know I pick goat very well, the whole thing has a lot to do with eclipses, including the Heliofont logo. So it's not by chance that we're looking at a symbolism for an eclipse happening right here. You see you have one circle here drawn, of course, in black. And if you look real close, you can see there's another one in here. There's a second line that's here as well showing an eclipse. And of course, we've got the six stars and we've got electrical fencing around here symbolizing that something electrical could take place. Maybe there could be a spark in this wire that's surrounding the eclipse symbolism. Maybe. So if you go from there and you go forward, let's see where we want to go. Of course, we got more star symbolism, deity symbolism, because if you don't know yet, the stars that you see in the heavens and the things that they call planets are deities. They're the hosts of the heavens and they follow and, and administrate Father's orders. If we come forward to right here, you can see Obama, or Obama, which his name, Barack Obama, literally means I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. So here is Satan. And when does Satan show up? You can see that he has the eclipse on his cheek. When does he arrive? See, he's got the pointed teeth, the pointed ears. His name is Barack Obama. He's symbolizing Satan. When does Satan arrive? He arrives when there's an eclipse. You can see it on his face with another object off to the upper left. Right there. Your semen, a.k.a. mathematically matched Gematria Comet. Okay. All right. Move forward, of course. So when does Satan arrive? When do things go down? When does two things happen? They arrive when there's an eclipse. This is, again, eclipse symbolism right here in front of us. If we back up, let's see if I can back it up quick enough here. And the light will come back on and you can see as well. Come on. There we go. You can see right there on the on the floor you have that object again. <laughs> and from her perspective, looking at it, it would be upper left. Okay. And so here you go. Now this is all this high pay stuff is multi, multi, multi layered. Of course, this could be symbolism of, of the, the woman clothed in the sun, as you see with the eclipse going on, with the moon at her feet, which, of course, there in the eclipse, you got the moon and the sun right there. And with 12 stars, of course, there's 12 uh, icons here for children or people or whatever. And you could go on and on. But what goes down right here? Well, something goes down right here that scares Obama. Okay. He's disturbed by or whatever, right? And there's many ways to look at it because this is tied to the fall of Babylon. This is tied to the big apple falling. You know, there's a lot of things, ways to look at it. But when what we're focusing on right now is when does Satan arrive? And what would be the signs and symbols to look for? upon his arrival. So let's move forward here to another scene. Right here. Here, this is, again, symbolizing a lot of things, but this is a head being cut off by the front of this 
this uh, symbolism for a submarine, I believe. And it's, uh, it's cutting off the head of Babylon. And you have all these characters here. Move forward a little bit. You see he has got a comet on his chin. There's a eclipse going on, and he's calling something forth. And Dan, you said uh, from an Islamic standpoint, it would be called the 12th Imam. 12th Imam, or it could be the Mahdi. But in this case, it would be the 12th Imam, the Antichrist. So here we go. we got the Antichrist coming down again during an eclipse. When does, when does the when does the angel of death, the angel, the deity, the Antichrist of death arrive? He arrives when there's an eclipse and a comet. You see, it's there again. It's over and over. And, of course, you can see behind him there are missiles. Dan, you said something once about his hand. Yeah, when it shows right, uh, see the spot right as part of the camouflage, but it also looks like it's supposed to be um, something went through his wrist. In other words, mimicking the crucifixion. Um, maybe. He's calling forth the mockery, the uh, Antichrist of 12th Amon. Right. Yeah. So there's that one. Well, let's look a little further. And Daniel, I find it fascinating. Our pet goat starts with the opening of a door. Yeah, gateway. Exactly. Uh, and what the biggest gateway we can get is an eclipse. Can we go back to when uh, Trump said they just cast an evil, evil spell? I think mm -hmm. when the doorway got open. <clears throat> I also kind of wanted to bring up that it does start out too, where, you know, um, it's kind of like a lockdown camp mm -hmm. kind of situation. It's symbolizing Auschwitz. Mm -hmm. They had the same kind of fence scene and everything. Exactly. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the whistleblowers that came out just recently about the events coming up did mention because they are expecting an attack possibly biological that that kind of scenario lockdown type of thing might happen again so you know just to throw that out there i want to be shannon remind me again approximately when this the eclipse starts beginning across the united states it starts april 8th no, what time of the day? Oh, what time of the day? Actually, I'm not sure exactly what time what? of the day. Noon. Noon. Yeah. And how long does this last, this process last? Isn't it like a full four and a half minutes altogether? Mm, well, that's the, um, that's the totality, but the entire eclipse, meaning as the moon, as we will use the words that we've got to work with as the moon starts it's moving in and across in front of the sun we use those words um it lasts about well, overall about three hours three hours that sounds familiar mm -hmm. anybody something starting at noon my yeah. understanding was between three and three and a half hours right exactly it's about the same amount of time just like it's descri described um uh, in Matthew and uh, Mark about when Christ was crucified. It's about, starts at about noon, then goes on to the ninth hour of the day, which would have been three o'clock. Very interesting. Funny how this mirror reflection thing is working. And I've got a bunch of other things to show you related to this that we're going to get to. But if I jump to them now, it'll be off track. But I've got some, yeah. So here we have this character show up that's called Draco in this video. And of course, he's, he's he shows up and he's got a long tail, kind of like a, you know, like kind of like a serpent or kind of like a a sperm. 
kind of light. And he, of course, the dragon is Draco, which is what they called him, the dragon. He is studying the egg, of course, because that's what he's ultimately interested in. And you have the hand of what I've called Father Time over here kind of controlling it. And I mentioned time when I first started this video out about time being the the thing that allows for this mirroring effect to take place. Every, let's see, you know how long a year takes? It's like 360 some days, basically, as we know it. Um, but there's this thing when it comes actually to 30, the number 33. Um, I was doing some research and I've got a couple of things to show you on here in a minute, but there, of course, we know that it said that, it, that Christ was crucified, basically, sounds like on his birthday when he's 33 years old. So there's something with the 33, and of course, we know there is. But it's about the movement of the heavens as well, because if there's something about it down here, there's something about it up there. The, the sun and the moon, every 33 years, return to their exact positions as they were 33 years earlier. If you can understand that in your head, what I'm saying to you. And they follow a path that creates what would, most people would probably call the flower of life. They create, it draws, draws it out following this path. And everything operates based on these. It's drawing out a point of creation. It's reflecting from the highest level all the way down to the, the eyes in our face and the things on our bodies that we've talked about. It's all about the point of creation. And father's showing us that that's how he's designed it and he's made that real clear to me uh over the last years but especially since me and shannon started doing this work i've really honed in on it thanks to father answer my prayers because i'll pray for these things the answers to these things and it gets delivered like like a ups truck coming it says here it is right here in your head look up this look at that what about this and it's like, there it is. There's the answer. Like when I, when I, when I said, okay, works on earth like it works in heaven. So if we procreate and if a spark happens and we procreate um, and there's something that looks like a, a sperm and then there's two ovaries and then they produce of course, an egg that ends up inside of the uterus. And so, and then you have the sperm and the egg, they come together, you have a spark. If it happens like that here, it's going to happen like that there with certain events. And when I've come to that realization, I said, well, if that's true, that the, the gematria for this is going to match. Um, let me give you an example. So I pulled up this. Devil's Comet. Okay. This is the practice. And it's the way that Father even says that we should count the number of his name. That we should count. That's numbers. Father's telling us this is the way mathematically things work like this. If you're new to Dramatria, I can't explain it all today. I've been talking about it for 15 years. But so we got Devil's Comet, and it's we'll just pay attention to the 762 or the 127 here, okay? So let's go over here. And look at this one.
I heard it in my head. If what I'm thinking is correct, the gematria will match. And when I pulled it up, I about fell out my chair. Because it did. But. You also have this. Remember the number on the bottom was 130, right? Let me see. No, oh, that's 127, excuse me. It's not the one I'm looking for. This is the one I'm looking for. Am I looking at this wrong here? Hang on just a second, guys. It's 762. I don't know why my screen's being a little difficult on me here. Um, so let's look at this. So Satan's Comet. Okay. 130, 780. Then look at this. 130, 780, serpent seed. You'd say, well, Daniel, that's just a coincidence. Uh, no. Father works with me where he has the Holy Spirit place words and thoughts in my head, and I've learned to listen to that voice. And it led me straight to this stuff. Uh, here happens to be another interesting image. This is an image of an eclipse. And Trump is looking at Babylon, which is right there. Or the head of Babylon, the, the head of the snake, you might say, is New York City. Which is why he lives there and has his 66-story golden-laden palace with Apollo symbolism throughout the whole place. So, let's keep going here. So I was saying, when does, when does, uh, it's interesting how this television is, uh, it's pretty round, ain't it? Kind of looks very much like an eclipse, even, kind of. But I'm not saying that exactly, but I think that's pretty interesting. But uh, let's move forward here to right. Where is it at here? I'll let it play. So let's see when Satan shows up. Right. He's here, right? The Antichrist, the son of Satan. And here's your eclipse in his ear. The symbolism of an eclipse. I would imagine most all of you can see that and know that that is correct along with all the other symbolism we're seeing here. Knowing how much of this video is tied to that. Okay. And let's move forward. You can make argument for this one as well because of how these look as representing when the restrainer is pulled back, when the bow is untied by the horseman that's wearing jockeys with the skull and bones on his shoulder and the light that exists within it concerns me that the light that exists within people that unless the father intervenes, it would seem like their light's going to go out. 
and that will not be good. Of course, we've got this scene. This is the yin yang symbol of the flag for North Korea. And of course, we can see, and I know, and I've mentioned this last time, the yin yang symbol is the symbol for an eclipse taking place. So, when does war break out in the body? See the ribs of the body here? This is in the body. What did we just say? That the lights are going to go out and war is going to break out in the body. A takeover is taking place. Oh, Lord, thank you. Whew. Let me slow this down just a little bit so it won't play so fast when I do hit play. So you got your eclipse taking place. They've already surrendered. But it's too late. You've got him wearing the diamond ring, which is the diamond for April. You can see the diamond ring right here. That's the stone related to April. He's got the flower in his ear, the daisy, which is the the flower for April. April 8th is Nissan 1. It is the first day of the new year. The real new year. And as you can see, this is inside the body. Here are the ribs. War is going to break out. There's a takeover taking place. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Let's take a look at this scene right here. A few things I've said before, but they deserve to be said again. The dragon is going to spew fire will be cast forth <laughs> into the water into the sea, into the people. He's going to back up, rear back, and he's going to spew. And here it comes. Through windows of time. Spewing fire into the mouth. As the earth opens up its mouth, which ultimately is symbolic for the people. Here you have the eclipse symbolism again, reconfirming that this goes down during the eclipse. That the seed in the apple that you can see here is going to be altered. There's a takeover taking place. You'll see the fire and the sparks and stuff going on like I'm describing. There's your, your fire and your sparks taking place. When creation happens, when something crosses a veil, a spark takes place. Something might go in, something might go out. Let's see, let's move this forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. Here are your, the 
semen that we're talking about being transformed. Fire is a transformer. Oops, did we lose Shannon? Oh, she's just taking a break or something. These are symbolic. These are semen is what this is. It's symbolism for it. Here is the alteration, the destruction of the seed. And the pits of hell open up. Let's see, if you go forward. About here, probably. Of course, you've all seen these these characters. These represent stars in the heaven. They represent deities, angels, stars in the heaven. And they're dancing. They're making their turns through the heavens. And that one, of course, that one says 23 because the mirror image date of April 8th is September 23rd. It represents a mirror, a moment in time as well as when something is going to take place. And of course, as you can see, it's dark right now. The stars are out. He represents a star. It's dark. They're moving through the heavens, making their turns, and then the light comes back. <coughs> they have two suns. There was an eclipse in um, uh, it was the first time a comet had ever been seen during an eclipse that's recorded in history in ways. And it was I can't remember the date. It was a long time ago, hundreds of years ago. And it's, it's documented that the comet got so bright, it was like there were two suns in the sky. I'm not kidding. You can look up. Let me see here. You can look up. Uh, mm, I think I got it on a different screen. I could probably pull it up. You can look it up by the the day with two suns. That's what they named it, the day with two suns. Where during the eclipse, the comet was so bright, it overtook the show, you might say. And I wonder if that ain't what we're getting ready to see, something like that. You see, because something y'all guys don't really, understand about this eclipse is that the moon during this eclipse compared to the last eclipse is about the appearance to the eye is that the moon is about 20-25% larger <laughs> this eclipse which means that you're going to get total darkness it's not going to be like last time where you think you can still see I walk around and all that. It's just kind of like it's twilight. No, it's going pitch black. That's going to be one thing that's going to really surprise people is, is that it's going pitch black this time. There's a 25%, 20-25% difference. You can look it up. It's called a super moon. But it's a super new moon. And it happens to be on an eclipse. And when it goes that black, the heavens are going to come alive. 
in the middle of the day. <coughs> and you're going to be able to see way more than what they're telling you you're going to be able to see, I believe. Of course, we're going to see Jupiter and Venus and the comet. But for those of you that find yourself in a place where there's no clouds, you're going to get quite the show, I do believe. And I'm hoping that many of you guys will, if you haven't already, I want you to turn your camera on for me. If you go to the website, it's called the thesupernatural.show. There are links below the video. You go here and click on this button. It says 2024 Great Eclipse. It's best to do it on a computer or a PC. You have the best experience. Go ahead and click on that, and you can sign up to be a cameraman. All you have to have is a cell phone. You can come here. We've got 13 days left. You can come here and register. And all I do is send you a link. Of course, I'll communicate with you before this event, well before it, which is very, very soon. I've already started some communications with people. Um, we're going to have people all the way from Texas to Maine with their cell phones. And all you have to do, you don't have to talk. You don't have to show your face. All you got to do is click a link and say, yes, turn on my uh, camera and point your phone at the sky when the eclipse is happening. That's all you got to do. So you come here and register, and no matter what happens, we're gonna, we'll are gonna we all be able to see it. If So if you're choosing to be outside during the eclipse, and you're going to be in the path of totality, not outside the path, but in the path of totality, please come here and register. We're going to be live the day of the eclipse, we already have going on a dozen people reserved all along the line here. and But I want a couple more, okay? So please go and register. Go to the supernatural.show and click on that page at the top that says the 2024 Great Eclipse X, all right? And let's go back over here, finish what we were saying here. We'll get, I don't know how we're going to get to everything. It just about ain't possible. <clears throat> so, of course, we're all familiar with the symbolism of, of this and everything, the pulsating sun. You also need to realize that the, the scorpion, Scorpio, will be in the heavens that day. They rise. Uh, they'll be in the heavens that day, uh, especially when the sun is coming up. And Aquila... The eagle that you can see right here, let me make this a little bigger. The eagle that you can see right here is Aquila. And Aquila is also in the heavens that day, during the day. And uh, you can see that there's a baby here. Looks like a child sitting facing the sun. Are they saying there's a child coming? Are they saying there's the essence of someone coming? I think they are. But they're also symbolizing, of course, at this moment that this goes down, you have a comet or an asteroid or whatever it is, a missile, whatever these things are symbolizing, one comes in and hits the pyramid and destroys Babylon. And I'm sure most all of you have seen this before. And all the pyramids fall down. And then, of course, at the very, very end, we've got this thing, this thing here. This is their logo. This is showing everything I've been talking about. The devil's essence, the symbolism in the heavens of the devil arriving or rather his son, the second son, arriving. All right. Let's keep uh, keep going, but guys, your, uh, any thoughts at this point? I know I kind of get carried away, but.
can help sometimes. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I just, again, you know, am reminded that um, Homeland Security has briefed people in these areas who, you know, are in charge of things. And there's just a, a lot of things that they are alluding to that, you know, that could happen. Certainly not date setting or doing anything along those lines, but when, I mean, they've been working on this thing for two years, saying to, you know, the other people in their departments that there could be a T attack or some biological thing. The last eclipse we had, the <coughs> balloons that had um, bacteria on it, just to see, you know, what it would do in the eclipse, just some weird things. And, you know, I would just make sure you're prayed up, especially if you are gonna be outside filming, um, just really, keep yourself protected in the Lord because obviously something is going to happen and it's just really important that you keep your eyes to the Lord Jesus and don't don't fear what's coming just be prepared don't be scared be prepared That's so prepared is uh, being in touch with your father exactly and having faith Fear has no place here. Amen. Fear has no place. Dan, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. They say all these crowds are coming, right? Can you talk to me about this? Quite a bit. The problem is, is that where are all these people supposed to come from? It's a work day. Not only that, according to the um, um, forecast, Two-thirds to, to almost three-quarters of it is supposed to be under cloud cover all along that path. And yet all these states have pulled out National Guard over to where the area totality is, which is right up against the Mississippi. What's the purpose? I mean, the military certainly is aware of what the weather is going to do. The other thing is that uh, gets me is that when you have all these people pulled forward, when you're trying to sell an event to the people, then you have to carry through with it. But what transpires during that time, because it's my sincere belief that this is the last major warning for the United States. That this stuff is coming and we cannot get into fear. Like Shannon said, we cannot. Babylon had to be destroyed by the Persians before those in bondage could be set free. Egypt had to be almost totally destroyed before those in bondage were to, uh, truly set free. So we shouldn't go into this in fear, but to understand this is to pull us out of Babylon. Stand in the light of the love of the Lord. If he's not your savior, then hopefully before this show is over, we'll get a chance to invite you to make him your savior so that you don't have these fears. God doesn't punish us. He's trying to deliver us. And if he has to shatter Babylon to get it done, he will do so. To, to quote the immortal words of, of Moses, you will set my people free. So that they can be free indeed. Yeah, thank you, Dan. Um, let me show, share the screen again. Got some other things I want to share. I find this interesting. There's all this major interest in the eclipse, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I just uh, did this a day or so ago maybe two days. This is a timeline, as you can see. This was, uh, this, this is um, March 19th. Wait a minute. 
Yeah. March 19th of 2023. And there was a big spike here for some reason. Don't know why exactly. I haven't looked into it. But it does not appear like there's really a whole lot of interest in from the public standpoint. This is a map showing where most of the interest is at, of course. Totality is kind of some of the major ones, but most interest for some reason is over here. It's not even in totality. This is doing a Google Trends search, in case you're wondering what I'm looking at. Um, let me see. I had another one here. Look at this one real quick. And if you go in actually close and look, the interest is actually dropping off. This is how many times people run Google searches. There's some drop off of interest in the last week, I guess. Okay, or last, yeah, yeah, last week. Kind of peak and bar dropping down. You think, well, that line's going straight up. It's going to get higher, but uh, right at the moment, it's dropping off. Actually, this image you're looking at here, guys, is the image of. Again, I'm showing you the imagery that we have to work with. Not that this is how I say things work, because I don't look at things in these ways. Um, but what? What they're talking about is how big the moon will be compared to last time. In 2017, the moon was way, f it appears in the heavens to be further away and smaller. Now, this is where the moon is going to be a lot closer or will appear to be closer and larger. And so when I say it's going to go dark, we're talking like midnight kind of dark is what we're going to be looking at when this event takes place, it is going to be a bone rattler. Because um, last time I was on the 33rd parallel, right in the center of the totality path in South Carolina, near McClellanville, South Carolina, just north of Charleston. And it got dark, but it did not get dark. Um, and you got to remember that there's going to be no moonlight either. Okay. So the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give us light. And we're really going to see it. And it might get so dark when you look next to you, there's no one there to see because you can't see. Have you ever been in true darkness? I would probably recommend if you're going to be in this eclipse, you might want to have a flashlight in your pocket. Because... When true darkness strikes, if there ain't no lights around, and God forbid that the grid goes down, because there's a whole lot of symbolism and things that are hinting towards that direction. Of, uh, you know, they'll say there was a big solar flare, which we've showed that they're symbolizing a big solar flare or something going down, a spark taking place, because that's what a solar flare is. If Satan is going to be cast down like lightning, well, then we've got to have a spark. Right? So I might have a flashlight in my pocket. Matter of fact, I'm going to have one in my pocket anyways where I'm at. Because you never know when the day of the Lord might show up. We don't know. And I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. Because I'm not looking forward to the day of the Lord. Um talking some serious darkness like Jonah in the belly of the well in complete darkness can't see nothing and that's basically what we're talking about during the eclipse is can't see nothing and remember the light systems ain't gonna be on because it's midday if it goes dark it's gonna be dark because it takes a little while for lights to start coming on and doing all that kind of thing it's gonna be interesting well, not not to mention, you know, the physical darkness, but 
there will be spiritual darkness in that kind of a thing and anything that happens on earth will happen in the body as well and in the heavens so keep that light of god strong because that's what's going to get you through in a situation like that yep exactly. but there is something that needs to be said daniel uh-huh during egypt God's people were in bondage and all the curses that came upon Egypt, they went through, but it doesn't say they were ever deeply affected. Not the boils, not the frogs, none of it. The three days of darkness, never did it say it affected God's people. <clears throat> they went through it. And right. there have been some that were more uh, Egyptian than, than Jewish that may have been affected but for the most part they were not affected and yet it talks about like in the three days of darkness it was so dark a man stood on the corner for three days because so no all these judgments may be coming but nothing will affect those who are the children of god right they destroyed yep. babylon and it took uh cyrus a Persia to set the, the God's people free. Okay, this is about Babylon and their problems. We shouldn't be in that kind of fear. So I just wanted to keep making that point. Do not get into fear. But understand that the Lord said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. And we keep talking like we've been forsaken. That just isn't going to happen, folks. <coughs> Sandra, Sonia made a comment that she can't wait for the day of the Lord. The Bible says we should not seek the day of the Lord because of it. it's just, it's not going to be what you're thinking. It will test everything you are. And it will expose everything you're not. So I'm, I'm not beating up on you, Sonia. I'm just saying. You're talking about three days of darkness and the things that are going to be going on. Like, read the read the burden of Babylon. When Babylon falls and there's three days of darkness. And the creatures that live in the woods and in the mountains come into the homes and they destroy all of the evil people. Specifically, bad people, they come and they kill everybody according to that prophecy. The burden of Babylon. And we're talking about, and we've talked about them before, the things that are, that there, there are beings that live on this earth that you haven't met yet. And they pretend like they're fantasy so that you'll never know the truth about them because they are supernatural in nature because they are, you might say, the cousins of Nephilim and abominations that were created a long time ago that still exist. Like the Bible says, giants being in the land in those days and in these days. I've heard them howl with my own ears. I have indeed. Uh, what you're looking at here is, you guys remember a few a couple of shows back, I said that the weather patterns are fought. The El Nino and El Nino weather patterns are following the eclipse paths. Right now we're in El Nino, right, Shannon? That's right. And the, every storm since I realized this, has done what? It's come up out of across Mexico, up through Texas, and followed this line, basically, like, like you see on this image here. What did the storm do um, the other day, Dan? Followed that exact same path. Yep. We're talking about this, the toroidal center, the eye of the storm, will follow this path. Yeah, it'll be raining over here, doing this over there, whatever. But the center of rotation is following this path. The path. This is uh, a couple of days ago, as you can see. 
this guy says, and he's a weatherman, he said, this is actually bizarre. And I'm not just saying that. This will be one of the more notable severe storm nights in March in recent history. This just happened a couple of this last storm. He says, in the past hour, over 16,000 individual lightning bolts from western New York to northeast Texas, spanning over 1,200 miles. And look where, look where the concentration of the lightning strikes were at the most, Dan. Dead center. Cairo, Egypt. Dead center yes. of the cross. Dead center of the Tav. <laughs> I mean, that's the path. And there's your weather band saying, I ain't never seen nothing like this before. This is bizarre. Noah Berggreen from something other, Channel 35 or something like that. I just happened to run across that and was like, okay. That's interesting. Very interesting. Let's see. I've got another tab here with a bunch of stuff on it. I've got, I was doing a lot of looking at all of the uh, ancient, older depictions of e uh, eclipses and depictions of the Star of Bethlehem. And there's a lot of, like this is an image supposedly of uh, one of those events. Same goes with this. You know, same goes with this. Um, me and Dan were looking at one the other day. Where's it at? It was very interesting as well. Yeah. Let me see if I've got it on the other tab that I've got here. I think this is the other tab. Now this is um, this is something an image that's seen in a lot of paintings an image that's behind the head of Christ. You'll see it in paintings. It looks like this. What it is is it's an eclipse taking place with the bands coming off of the star, coming off of the sun, and Christ's head being in the middle of it. He arrives or and departs during eclipses. I have no way to prove this, but I would. the Holy Spirit tells me that there was an eclipse and a comet in the sky uh, around the birth of Christ. <clears throat> it may have even been the at the point moment of the supernatural insemination that took place, the spark when the seed was fertilized by Father. And I find these are all different images of this symbol from different times throughout time from from way back, depicting eclipses, this is how they drew them. Because it's similar to kind of how, for whatever reason, they chose it. And all these different people over time chose to do it a, a, a similar way. This over here is probably the one we're most familiar with, that, that kind of image. Or this one, maybe. But that's the sun and the moon in front of the sun, using the word gab. I'll be depicted. <clears throat> kind of showed this already, but this was the Economist magazine showing how Trump is going to eclipse the world, eclipse the United States. Really, his their focus now is here because th this is Babylon as the head of the snake, the head of the beast system, the head that it's the the body of the whore that's riding on the back of the, the of the beast, riding on the back, placing burden on all these countries, and they'll and they'll come to hate us. And you know what these countries are and who they are. They cut. They already hate us. You know because of the things that the United States has done. We've been going around invading countries forever and making out like we're giving them freedom. I mean. We're murdering all of our babies. I mean, you can't hardly find a child anymore. I mean, you, you got to go sit around the schoolhouse like you're a predator or something in order to see children. 
you know, they just don't hardly exist anymore. And you got this this imagery here from Economist magazine, and you got you can see symbolism of of uh, Christ back here, and you got symbolism of China over here, and you got symbolism of a spark coming down and destroying the tower. The tower like the Tower of Babylon, destroying Babylon. Right beside it, you've got judgment coming, coming upon particularly the United States, but also the world. The judgment card they gave us, you know? And then you got over here. I mean, you could uh, you could say some things are going on here. Whether you, know, you got the world with all these things going on and everything, it's a lot right, of a great reset leading into right. And here you got a comet, the star. See. World in 2017. Got a comet coming. Well, they did tell us. And here's imagery of the moon. Of course, the moon is not what they told you when you were a child or even will tell you now. The moon is it's its own deity. It's, it's supernatural. Um, and here you got all the stars, and you got a comet. The star. Oh, let's see what else here. You got Father Time, death on the back of the white horse, and you got plague of insects. You've got the streams are dry and dead fish in the streams and basically the apocalypse, basically. <clears throat> and Trump is the one who is symbolizing himself as the destroyer, Apollo. The bringer of the disease and the bringer of the cure. I mean, they can't draw an image basically without having sun and moon in it. Or see the X is on the ballots down here. X. Meaning judgment, death. Here's the world ahead, 2024. See any eclipse symbolism in that one, Shannon? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got Neuralink over here. You got the financial system crashing over here. You got eclipse symbolism here, of course. You've got... Uh, the war going on between you know who and you know who. Daniel, right there, if you'll go back up. Uh huh. See the shadow of the little girl with the ponytail? Yeah. It uh, always reminds me of the girl with the ponytail and I pet goat. Lily? The one who Father Time reaches down by catching oh. the shoulder. Uh huh. It's too late. War, it's, war, it's, war. It's war. Well, see, if you're having war in the body and you're having war on on earth, there'll be war in heavens where Michael makes his move and ultimately casts Satan down. Let's see here. Ah, uh,
And when the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman, which brought forth the man-child. I mean, this, this whole, everything you see here, this whole scripture here, Revelations 12, 1, this all plays out in I pet goat. which I demonstrated, well, I guess six, eight months ago when I was doing the decode, the heavy, heavy decode on IPEC dope about the, the dragon spewing and all that, when all that revelation came to me and I come to understand it better. And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed which kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. we will read the one right before that again too. And the earth helped the woman and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon cast out of his mouth. All the symbolism there, how it will all play out I think we're about getting ready to find out. And how ironic that they shut down their website. I pet go to the Helio font for mm -hmm. a while and then just reappeared right before all of this stuff was about to happen. The last video they were doing was showing their showing the point to their watch. It's time. And then they boop, disappeared. And then now what's been about a 30 days or so, they've been back up again mm -hmm. right, right before uh, the event that they're, they've been symbolizing in their video the whole time. I've been decoding my pet goat for, it's probably been about eight years, I guess. It's amazing how long it took me to come to the discernment to understand it, to be able to see it a lot better. I'm not saying I understand every single thing, but I wanted to inject one yeah. thing here. The night that, uh, the day that Christ was crucified, Peter denied knowing him three times. Uh huh. It's my belief we've had three warnings 9 11, 2017, and the one that comes. How much longer will we deny? Um, for some, it will be forever. For some, they're already damned, so there's no need. But for a lot of the ones, there are 330 people watching on YouTube right that second. 330, probably 333 here in a second. God works in amazing ways. Can I do what I normally do about now? Um, yeah, well, let me make sure real quick. Uh, yes, please. A couple of images. And we will. We've got to save your crescendo for the right moment. And we're almost there. <clears throat> I've got so much more stuff I could go over. It's insane. But I guess I'm going to have to do it a little separately. If you look at this here, this is another economist thing. It says the next catastrophe. And, uh, of course, they've got the solar flare event over here. Right? And they've got like a comet or a meteor like it's depicted in IPET goat right here. And it's the time on the clock is the same as it is in IPET goat. It's midday or midnight, or it will be midnight at midday because that's when the, uh, approximately when the, um, when the eclipse totality will enter into the United States is around noon and lasts for about three, three and a half hours. Just like we're familiar with that story from before. You got volcanoes going off. 
got all kind of things taking place here. And of course, most of it has to do with, a lot of it has to do with fear. That's why the people sitting here with their gas masks on is they're, they have no faith and they're in the bottom of the boat. And Christ says, ye of little faith. If you only knew the authority that you have in our Father and the things that he can do for you through you choosing to turn your back on this world and turn your face to him. I can promise you he can supernaturally protect each and every one of you. I have no doubt. I have no doubt. You know why I know? Because he's done it for me already. I should be, I'm a dead man. I'm not kidding. I ain't even playing. I ain't exaggerating. I am, you're looking at a walking, living, talking, dead man. Dan, one day you got to tell your story. <laughs> click, click. Yeah, that's, that yeah. would take time. Right. Well, we got to do that. Maybe we should do that. And uh, we got to do that soon. I really want people to understand that you're a dead man, too, or should be. But yet, many times, you, many you are. Times. Right. They almost got you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost got me. Yeah. Um. So why don't you then go ahead and do what you're talking about and uh, help okay. people understand, uh, give them a message as to how to maybe approach a situation that they're uncomfortable with, but they feel like it needs to be done. Shalom, brothers and sisters. You know, I was reading the comments a while ago and one made a statement that I was calming people down and Daniel was turning them up again. I hope so. <laughs> I truly, truly hope so. <clears throat> Those who have the Lord should be calm, at peace. But if you don't have the Lord, all these things are fixed to be upon you. All the things that all these shows that Daniel does is to get you to understand how desperately you need our Lord and King. I deal with stuff here all the time. I mean, I've sent videos in. I've shown you everything from what's in the water all the way to black goo, all the way to uh, entities moving around, footprints of, of uh, uh, shapeshifters, whatever. The whole point being is if you don't have the Lord God as your Savior, if you're standing out there just you, in so many ways buck naked before the forces that are coming against you with no protection, then you ought to be afraid, very afraid. Because it's there to destroy you before you can make a choice. But I come now to offer you that opportunity that you do not have to live in fear. You don't have to start watching over your shoulder because you have the Holy Lord himself with you. The Lord said he would never leave you nor forsake you. For Christians, all we did told us was look up. These things must come to pass, so look up for your redemption draw at night. Yeah, that's a lot of worry there. But the rest of the world are looking at destruction, disease, all form of things coming against them. And they can bury their head in the sand, but only temporarily before that sand blows away and there's no place left to hide. It's up to you. I mean, the choice is yours. All the things that we showed you in the video that happened around here in four days it took me 30 minutes to deal with. And that's because I move slow now. I'm seven. But without the word of God, the Lord only knows. So I ask you now, stop and think. Just take a moment and stop and think. Do you really want to go through this stuff without the Lord's covering? without his love, without his power, without his grace, do you really want to chance all this? we got war on every front. They're talking about pandemics. They're talking. They're always trying to get you into a spirit of fear. 
Well, if you don't have the Lord, that's what you have. So now, I'm just asking you to take a moment and surrender. Surrender to the Lord God himself so that he now can come and stand beside you. The Bible says, having done all else, now stand and see the power of God. Your choice, it's your life. It is your forever. You choose. So please, please, if you will, please pray this prayer with me. For your destiny is at hand. I don't know how many more times you're going to come to that fork in the road where you can get that choice offered. And it won't be long before it's not offered any longer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come in the mighty, mighty name of our Lord and King, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lion of Judah, the Lamb of God. And we ask you, Jesus the Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, to come. Come. And I confess to you I'm a sinner. I've been left out in the darkness, but want to be naked before the enemy no longer but clothed in your light, in your righteousness, and in your power. I'm tired of being alone in these circumstances. I'm tired of feeling like they're trying to destroy me. And so I come to you and ask you to be the Lord of my life, to watch over me. I surrender myself to you, body, soul, and spirit. Please, Lord. Accept me into your family, into your kingdom, into your love, and into your protection. Let your power cover me always. Please come and be the Lord of my life. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, you are Lord and King, Jesus the Christ. I ask this of you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you uh, prayed that prayer, all of heaven is now rejoicing. All of heaven knows that the one has come home. Welcome to the family. Open up your hearts and let the king fill it full of the love and confidence that is him. Stand strong in these days, my brothers and sisters. I keep telling you, the enemy has much more to fear from us than we should ever fear from them. We have the grace, the power, and the holy word of God at our, in our hands, in our mouths, in our minds. And they can't defeat that. All they can do is get us to surrender it. Don't you do it. Stand strong and rejoice. Now, if you would, just leave a comment saying you prayed that prayer. This is not for us. This is your finishing the contract you just initiated. This is your confession of faith. And welcome, my brothers and sisters. Welcome. Until next time. Shalom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dan. You you got to realize what you're doing is you're, you're praying that prayer. You're turning your back on evil. You know that you've seen it your whole life. You've been involved in it like I was. You participated in it like I have. And there comes a day when you have to realize, yeah, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. I can see now, and I know that I've been manipulated, I've been lied to, I've been tricked into seeking things and wanting things that I never should have touched. So you're just turning your back on the darkness. Yeah, it's still going to exist, but you will be outside of it. That's all we're trying to do. 
is help you see and understand what we see and understand. Help you realize how wonderful and great the protection of our Father is. Because, like I said, I'm a dead man. You know how many people would love to harm me, but they can't. You know how many people have tried to harm Dan? I almost got him, but he's still here, just like I am. That protection is supernatural, and it's it's already upon you. Father's just waiting on you to realize it. So most people, they, they, they've all tried to get us to live in fear our whole life because fear is having no faith. And most people, when a bad thunderstorm comes up, they run inside and they hide. I go out and sit in the lightning storm. There's a whole even more to that story, but I'm not going to get into it right now. But I go out and sit in the lightning storms because I know that. So Father pulls my, my truck in the middle of the night. I run off the road. I'm going to crash. He takes it, puts it back on the road. He protects me from SWAT teams, says, get up and walk out. Now I leave. I get saved in other situations where I should have crashed and died. I fell off the side of a mountain one time on a dirt bike, flipped end over end, went way down the side of the mountain, way down there, landed on the only patch of sand that there was. So I, I know if Father protect me like that then, he's not going to take me out with a lightning bolt or allow that to happen. <laughs> Unless it's his will. And if it's his will, I'm okay with it. But that's the kind of faith you can have. You can walk upon an army of men and know that they can't touch you. Because you'll start realizing your authority that you have within you. What's God given? As soon as you realize that you have it. And turn away from the flesh world. And focus on your heavenly world and your heavenly father. Because life has yet to begin. It begins by death. We were just lied to about that just like we were everything else. They say death, boo. Death, bad. Death, scary. I say... If you pass this test, man, and we're trying to help you and urge you along, if you pass this test, we're in death, great. Get out of hell. Get out of this test. Get out of this place where they killed babies. Get out of this place where people that are strung out on terrible things, they've fallen into traps, and they just let them keep falling and struggling and don't help who needs help and they hurt who don't need no help. Anything that's on the television is a lie, a deception. Everything that's in the medical system, they're trying to kill you or alter your DNA. They're trying to steal your soul. They're less concerned about killing you. What they're interested in is getting at your soul. They want you to not make it. The Father wants us to make it, and we've all made great mistakes. I can assure you, I've made more than most of you. I've done things that I would speak in truth, yet I'm ashamed of them. But I, I've left those things behind. I've left the earthly ways behind in a lot, a lot of ways. Yes. I'm still here, but while I'm here, I'm going to work for Father. So you won't be seeing me get a job anytime soon. I got this work to do. Miss Shannon, you're sitting there so nice, quiet, but I know you got something you probably want to say, but you know it's about the end of the show. <laughs> Or can I say the end of the service? Very used to change my words because it is what it is. 
God has us here for a reason, and when his will is to bring us home, it will be one of the greatest joys ever. And um, I really appreciate everybody here today who are wanting to know the truth and things to look out for as we're in this journey in this world of trauma. <laughs> so I'd like to no. um, just, just know that those of you who did come and give yourself to Jesus today who hadn't before, you're among amazing family. None of us are perfect, only Jesus is perfect, but we all at least get to learn together and walk as a family and learn as a family and know that you're not alone and that we are here to give love and blessings through Jesus. And may that Holy Spirit fill you and bring you joy. As Dan would say, don't let anyone steal your joy because that is one of the most beautiful gifts from God that we do have. And um, I love you all. And thank you all for your prayers as I'm going through all this stuff. And um, other than that, I'm going to keep looking up because our, our redemption, our redemption draws nigh. I can talk, I swear. <laughs> Uh, please come back to find out what in the supernatural is going on and please like and subscribe and uh, yeah and if you guys that are over there on logic before authority come over to the supernatural show channel and subscribe on there at some point I might actually get a nickel from that from that channel you know from the supernatural channel um, it was logic before authority it's not monetized and uh but i have uh, monetized the supernatural show on youtube but in nine months i've made like seven dollars so it ain't uh working very good but i ain't worried about that but it would help plus i really want y'all guys to be subscribed to both of my channels if you're not familiar with logic before authority you should go over there and subscribe to that too that's the other name personality i go by or whatever you want to call it Got to have logic before listening to authority. That's the concept behind that. Guys, uh, I think we are about ready to get out of here. I, I have a lot more information. Might do another show in the next day or two. I'm going to pop again because I've just got so much more than can be a chance to really show. But we showed enough of really interesting solid concepts if you missed the beginning of this show you missed really the important part if you're still watching but you didn't see the first 15 minutes you got to go back to the beginning and start from the beginning where i tell you you need to sit down because there are discernments to be understood in the first 15 minutes of this that you need to consider. I'm not telling you to go get a hook in your mouth and believe everything I say. I'm saying consider what I'm saying. Think about it and make your own choice, your own decision for yourself as to how things supernaturally work in this world. As in heaven, we'll be on the earth and in the body. So... With that being said, I love you guys and uh, appreciate all your guys' support. If you have a chance to throw a nickel in the bucket occasionally, we would appreciate it because this is the work I do. And when y'all guys throw a nickel, let's say you throw a dime in the bucket, I send Dan a penny and Shannon a penny. So, uh, you got a couple of dimes, we can, we'd appreciate your support. Because like I said, this is what I do full-time. And Dan, he is a full-time warrior himself. Shannon has a family and a husband and 
with kids and she got all that going on. And a zoo of animals. <laughs> We're all doing this out of the conviction that's upon our heart that we should be doing this. So all those links to Dan's, uh, like his, maybe his PayPal or Cash App, if you know I had him set it up. His are down there. Shannon's are down in the in the more button or more description down there. And mine, of course, are there. Um, but thank you very much for being here today. Your time's valuable. I know all of you take time out, an hour to sit here, an hour and a half to sit here and listen. So I appreciate you. I love you. And we'll see you next time here on The Supernatural Show. Bye-bye, guys. Shalom. Thank mm -hmm. you.